So before you head off to your first week in lab, I wanted to remind you that lab is actually a really important part of your developmental experience as a forming scientist. And uh, those of you in the class are coming in with different levels of expertise, skills, and experience, depending on whether you're freshmen or seniors, depending on whether you've taken other science classes, depending even on when your high school science classes took place, if they were early in high school, or maybe it's been a few years since you've been in a science classroom. And that's the case for first-time freshmen, traditional students, and those returning to college after a hiatus to do other things. So I wanted to emphasize that those three hours that you have in lab every week are actually really important. Not just because they're worth a heavy number of points in the course and that you earn those points taking quizzes, exams, and writing up your lab write-ups, but also because it's part of your development really as a scientist. So what is going to be important to you in lab? Let's think about it. Obviously, it's gonna teach you a lot of skills that you're gonna use for the rest of your career as a scientist. So any science career might make use of a microscope. You'll be using two different kinds of microscopes in your coursework here. And in fact, if you take microbiology, bacteriology later on, you'll use high power uh, oil immersion techniques that we don't use in the introductory classes. So you'll learn even more. Of course, you may have some skills already. Like I bet that most of you know that if you're taking a volume measurement in a graduated cylinder to measure at the bottom part of the meniscus, you probably learned that in a high school class. But it may be that many of you have never had the opportunity to learn to micropipette. And so this is a micropipetter. You're gonna be using it this semester. It's for accurately measuring very small volumes so that I can take up less than a milliliter of liquid and then accurately dispense it into my test container. And so I have just a small droplet now on the slide, but I can be pretty convinced because I've taken so much care and I'm so practiced at micropipetting that my tiny fraction of a millimeter measurement is accurate and precise. What other kinds of things have you used? Have you ever wondered how is it that salivary enzymes don't denature right there in your mouth? Is your mouth relatively acidic like your stomach is? Well, you could use pH paper to find out rather than just guess. So let's see. I have pH paper here that ranges from pH 3 to 5.5. So that would be pretty acidic. Let's see what I get. Oh, green. Green matches up with 5.5, but it looks really dark green. So what if I take a different range of pH paper? This one runs from 6 to 8.0. And when I try that one, it matches up right in the 6.0 range. Did you know that your mouth is slightly acidic compared to neutral, which would be 7? So neutral pH, 7.0, and my saliva right now anyways is at 6.0. It'd be interesting to know if that stays the same throughout the day or whether it changes. So the idea is that lab not only teaches you skills and abilities that you might even start putting on your resume from your first science class, but in addition to that, it should teach you to start thinking like a scientist. So to get the most out of lab, what I recommend is that you spend time before, during, and after lab thinking. So be prepared for lab. Look through your lab manual. Read the lab exercise. If there's a vocabulary term, you don't feel like you quite understand it, why not open the textbook, look in the glossary? Maybe you can get a better explanation there. And really tie the whole course together. So before lab, come in prepared. What are we gonna be doing this week? How does the procedure work? What are the steps in order? Where am I confused? And want some clarification from my lab instructor before I begin. And then during lab, be thoughtful. Why are we doing this part of the experiment? What is this meant to test? And then following lab, reflect on what you did and why. Why did we do step one, two, three? Why in that order? What did each solution have use for? And reflect early on. Finally, you are gonna be writing lab write-ups for six of your labs. And I would really recommend you write your lab write up as soon as lab finishes and call that your first draft. And then go back, make sure that you really thoughtfully in your own words answered every question that's being asked because not answering questions is a great way to lose points. Make sure you've answered every question thoughtfully, thoroughly, and in your own words to show your own understanding and learning. And that's what scientists do. They write in journals, they take notes, and that helps them to make sense of their own understanding of their experiments. And finally, when you get your work back in lab, save it. 
you might want to study that. Study your notes from lab, study your lab write-ups, which are touching on the most important questions, and have those resources available when you're studying for your practical exam at the end of the semester.